you might have seen this next volunteer snapping photos behind the scenes. Please welcome our youngest volunteer, Sophia Swallow, who's reading an excerpt from Malala Yousafzai. That's really hard for me. Nobel Prize acceptance speech. Welcome, Sophia. I tell my story not because it is unique, but because it is not. It is the story of many girls. Today, I tell their stories too. I am Alala, but I am also Shazaya. I am Kanat, I am Kanat Sumeru, I am Mezan, and I am Amina. I am the 66 million girls who are deprived of education. And today, I am not raising my voice. It is the voice of those 66 million girls. Sometimes people like to ask me why should girls go to school, but why should girls go to school? Why is the why is it important for them? But I think the more important question is why shouldn't they? Why shouldn't they have this right to go to school? Dear sisters and brothers, today in half of the world we see rapid progress and development. However, there are many countries where millions still suffer from very old problems of war, poverty and injustice. We still see conflicts in which innocent people lose their lives and children become orphans. We see many people becoming refugees in Syria, Gaza, and Iraq. In Afghanistan, we see families being killed in suicide attacks and bomb blasts. Many children in Africa do not have access to education because of poverty. And as I said, we still see girls who have no freedom to go to school in north of Nigeria. Many children in countries like Pakistan and India, especially Pakistan and India, are deprived of their right to education because of social taboos or they have been forced into child marriage or into child labor. One of my very good school friends, the same age as me, who had always been a bold and confident, confident girl, dreamed of becoming a doctor. But her dream remained a dream. At the age of 12, she was forced to get married. And then soon she had a son. She had a child when she herself was still a child, only 14. I know that she could have been a very good doctor, but she couldn't because she was a girl. Dear sisters and brothers, the so-called world of adults may understand it, but we children don't. Why is it that countries which we call strong, are so powerful in creating wars, but are so weak in bringing peace? Why is it that giving guns is so easy, but giving books is so hard? Why is it that making tanks is so easy, but building schools are so hard? We are living in the modern age, and we believe that nothing is impossible. We reached the moon 45 years ago, and maybe we'll soon land on Mars. Then in this 21st century, we must be able to give every child quality education. Dear sisters and brothers, dear fellow children, we must work, not wait. Not just the politicians and the world leaders, we need to contribute. Me, you, we. It is our duty. Let us become the first generation that decides the, to be the last that sees empty classrooms, lost childhoods, and wasted potentials. Let this be the last time that a girl or a boy is, spends their childhood in a factory. Let this be the last time that a girl is forced into early child marriage. Let this be the last time that a child loses life in war. Let this be the last time that we see a child out of school. Let this end with us. Let, let's begin this ending together today, right here, right now. Let's begin this ending now. 